Starcoder is a brand new large language model which has been released for code generation. Ever since it has been released, it has gotten a lot of hype and a lot of AI experts claim that it is one of the best large language models out there for code generation. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about what exactly is Starcoder, how does it compare with other state of the art large language models out there specifically for code generation. And we are also going to be testing out Starcoder in Visual Studio Code to see exactly how it works and if it actually is worth all the hype. So let's get started. Starcoder has been created by an open source AI organization called Big Code. And Big Code is a collaborative effort between Hugging Face and ServiceNow. The amazing thing about Starcoder to start off with is that it covers over 80 plus programming languages and it has taken data from Git commits, GitHub issues, and other various Jupyter notebooks. The fact that it is able to do that is because it has been trained on a data set called the stack. The stack is a, an extremely large data set consisting of code from GitHub. Additionally, Starcoder base actually outperforms existing open source uh, code large language models on very popular programming benchmarks. And also it surpasses a lot of closed large language models such as Code Cushman from OpenAI, which is the original Codex model that powered early versions of GitHub Copilot. And also Starcoder has a context length of over 8,000 tokens. Although there are a lot of other large language models which can take in much larger amount of tokens, but given the fact that this is an open source model and it's completely free, this is one of the largest amount of tokens for such a model. Other close large language models out there are able to take much larger tokens, but for Starcoder, given that it is completely open source, this is definitely on the higher end. Next up, let's take a look at the evaluation metrics of Starcoder and how it performs compared to other similar large language models. So first off, they found that Starcoder actually outperforms much larger large language models, for example, Palm, Lambda, and Llama. Despite Starcoder being significantly smaller, it has managed to actually outperform these models. Additionally, it has been evaluated on something called human eval dataset. So the human eval dataset is a really popular way of evaluating code generation amongst large language models. The human eval dataset consists of 164 different handwritten programming uh, questions. And it's a great way of testing large language models, especially since a lot of these LLMs are trained on Git, GitHub datasets. And human eval dataset is a really great way to test exactly how these LLMs perform. On the human eval dataset, Starcoder received about a 40% score, and that's significantly larger than these other large language models that we see, although they are much larger in size and also in parameters compared to Starcoder. So that is absolutely amazing. However, when we compare it to something like GPT-4, on human eval dataset, GPT-4 received a 67% score, which is also significantly larger than Starcoder. So this is something to note. The paper of Starcoder goes in depth into the type of datasets they use and what type of pre-processing they have done, as well as their model architecture. Some of the most important contributions of Starcoder is the fact that it's open source and completely transparent in the way that uh, it has been created. In addition to that, they have also incorporated a new attribution tool in their VS Code uh, demo, which I'll also be showing you guys exactly how you can use it. But the cool thing about this is that it can actually help you to detect if the code that has been generated for you has been taken from any other source or if it has been taken from the data set as well. And this is a really common worry that a lot of developers have when they're using large language models for code generation. So this is a great way to identify if your code has been used elsewhere. And it's also a great way to give attribution as well. To test out Starcoder in a very basic setting, we can make use of the StarChat playground, which has been created by Hugging Face. And we're actually able to give any sort of prompt. So for example, 
how can I write a Python function to generate the nth Fibonacci number? And if we give it that, it is going to give us the exact code as well as some explanation as well. I'm going to test out how can I extract data from a website using Python. So it says there are several libraries available for you to access. The most common one is Beautiful Soup. And then it also gives a simple code example of how exactly we can use a Python library called Beautiful Soup to extract data from websites. This is really amazing. Now to make this much more intuitive, we can also make use of StarCoder directly in, for example, Visual Studio Code as well as Jupyter Notebook. I'm going to be showing you guys how to use StarCoder in Visual Studio Code. Now what you want to do is open Visual Studio Code and create a Python file, which I've already done. I've called it starcoder.py. And what you want to do is you want to go into extensions and we want to search for HF code autocomplete, which essentially stands for hugging phase code autocomplete. And once you find it, you, you can go ahead and install it. So this extension makes use of the StarCoder model and we're going to be testing it out once it has been installed. Once you have installed this extension, we have to do two main things. We have to set up our API token. So you can find your API token for hugging phase on your account on hugging phase. And once you've done that, you can just copy your API token, but we have to set our API token inside of VS Code. So in order to do that, we can go and click Command Shift P or Control Shift P. And then once you do that, you should see a menu like this. And you can go ahead and click on Hugging Face Set API Token in order to do that. And once you click on that, you should see something like this and you can paste your token here. And once you have pasted your token, just click enter to confirm. To test out the star coder model, let's actually start by typing in a comment so that you can actually auto complete that. So I want to type out how to import a CSV file into a pandas data frame. This is one of the most basic things that you have to do as an ML engineer. So let's go ahead and do that. You can see it loading right here and that's how you know it's working. So as you can see, it has come up with this and you can click tab to accept. And there you have it. That is exactly how you would import a CSV file in Python. Next up, we're going to be trying something a bit more complicated. We're going to try to create a very basic linear regression project in Python and see how it comes up with some code for this. So this is what it has come up with. It has, we're going to tap and then let it auto complete. So the first thing is importing some libraries and then importing the data set. It has come up with this 50 startups data set. And let's see what it continues to come up with. And I'm going to click tab again with this. So it's importing a data set and it's creating the X and Y values. And also it's making use of a label encoder and then one hot encoder to create labels and then to create, to convert categorical labels into numerical labels. So this is also very similar to what you as a programmer or developer would do. Now let's actually go ahead and figure out if a lot of this code has been reused or it has been found in the data set that it has been trained on. So what you have to do is select the code that you want to test and then click command shift a. And interestingly enough, we have managed to find that this code is actually found in the stack. The stack is the data set on which star coder has been trained on. And this code was found in the stack. So this is something to note. And it's great that star coder has implemented this functionality of being able to identify code that it has been trained on. So as developers, you can definitely use it with a lot less stress or hassle because you can easily check if the code has been found in a previous data set or it has been trained on the similar code. So that's definitely very user friendly and super convenient as well. 
Tracorder also has a Jupyter Notebook plugin that you can download, which works very similarly to the Visual Studio Code one, but it's also very convenient because I'm sure a lot of people who are doing data science or ML, they are definitely using Jupyter Notebook. So it's very convenient to have that directly in Jupyter Notebook as well. So StarCoder also can be used as a technical assistant. And inside of the StarCoder paper, we see some examples of how exactly it can do that. So these are the instructions that it was given. And this is StarCoder's response right here. In the first instruction, it's, I need to integrate a Python function numerically. What's the best way to go about doing it? And StarCoder responded with, you know, there are a few options available depending upon whether you have access to libraries like SciPy or NumPy, which makes sense. And if you do, it also then gives an entire code snippet on exactly how you can go about doing that. And then there's a lot of other examples as well as to how it can help to be a technical assistant. So StarCoder is definitely a very helpful tool for developers. And it also helps you to break down your project or your code file into much more simpler steps or even give you def definitions of different functions that you might need in your projects. And I think that definitely helps to break down the steps as well. Now, as for actually generating code, it does a pretty good job of doing that as well. There are definitely some limitations for StarCoder. One of the biggest limitation as we have seen, and this has been pointed out in the report as well, is that there, there has been a failure case of the model in that it actually produces comments saying solution here instead of the code. And it does this because the data set that it was trained on, the stack, the large data set made comprising of code from GitHub, also has a lot of these comments saying solution here or code found here. So it has learned from this data set and that's essentially why it sometimes produces comments saying solution here instead of the actual code. And that's definitely a limitation. The, the biggest strengths about StarCoder is that it's a completely open source and extremely transparent model. So you can easily find out what sort of training has been done for StarCoder, what sort of data sets it makes use of, and the entire process involved in building it. And the amazing thing is that it has a really easy to use interface with the plugins as well. So as a developer, you can easily download that and make use of that when you're coding. Let us know what you guys thought about this video and what you guys thought about Star Coder and if you plan on trying that out when you're coding. Thank you guys for watching and subscribe for more AI related content.